There's a real temptation when we hear that uh, neuroscientists has discovered a particular part of the brain that's responsible for religious experiences or a geneticist has discovered a particular gene that predicts a l whether or not people are going to be religious at least a little bit or a cognitive scientist starts saying, well, we've got this natural predisposition toward religious belief. It's tempting to think that what follows from that is, therefore, we can stop believing this religious nonsense. We've explained it away. Let's not be too hasty. That's a little bit like saying, well, we have a good psychological account of why you think your mother loves you, so stop believing that your mother loves you. Or we can identify the uh, chemicals in the brain that lead you to think that your mother loves you, so she doesn't. Of course, that just doesn't follow. That's silly. Likewise, just because there are natural processes that are involved in our religious thought and our religious belief formation doesn't mean there is no God. God could be working through those natural processes. Of course God could. Um, and it's also the case that even though we might be able to give a very, eventually, a very complex, thorough, uh, cognitive scientific and neuroscientific account of why it is that a person is believing in God, we could probably do the same for somebody believing in not God, in which case the atheist should give up on their atheism as well, if that was good reasoning, and it isn't.